we're coming to the end of 2012. Is this a year best forgotten as far as India is concerned? It, I must admit it's been a very challenging year. So if you look at the, from a purely investment banker perspective, yes, a lot of capital has been raised. There have been a decent volume in terms of m and but it has been a very challenging year. And, you know, the, I think headwinds, both global and domestic headwinds, really hit us quite a bit. Uh, we were all hoping that commodity prices would remain softened, and that the policy environment would have gotten much better, inflation would have been tamed, and therefore there was a lot of expectation. I remember going into 2012 last year when I spoke to a number of people, there was a lot of expectation on what could get done in 2012. I think, but starting from September, things have really gotten better, both in terms of the slew of announcements made by the government and some of them actualized as well. So not you believe they're actualizing? Because generally uh, the view is good intentions, good announcements, but let's see what happens. So the FDI is actualized. The Banking Amendment Act has gotten passed. So this is actualization to my mind. And more needs to be done. So lots of announcement done and you've seen two or three actualizations as well. It's interesting uh, the way you summed it up because I've known you for about two decades now. You've been somewhat of an India bull. Would you say that this year, especially the first half that you talked about, actually made you fairly pessimistic? It made me somewhat frustrated, if I might say, because the underlying fundamentals that has made me so bullish about the country remain what they are. But unfortunately, we were getting battered by some of the global events. If you remember, Euro was at its peak of pessimism in that period. And our own domestic issues where there was some kind of a slowdown in terms of policy making, investment projects were not happening, you had all this confusion with the guard provision, particularly the impact that had on portfolio investments. As you know, stock market is a barometer of what the sentiment of the time is, and that was hugely impacted. So I was feeling we have all this phenomenal positive drive that is on in the country, but these clouds are just now overshadowing. So it was more frustrating. It was never a question that are the positive elements really there. They are there. I strongly believe they are there. But it, these clouds really overtook it for a while. You believe we shot ourselves in the foot as a I country? Think, I think we did, particularly the confusion we created at that time with this retrospective amendment. And I know a lot of people were worried about the impact of that in FDI. And I think on a long-term basis, yes, that was a negative. But the confusion we created on the portfolio investment side of it, you felt the impact here and now. And despite everything, isn't it ironical that we've seen the highest FII inflows into this country? Yeah, but that, if you remember, were, were a lot in the initial few months. As these, um, you know, when people studied the impact of GAR and the impact that would have on portfolio investments, that actually slowed down. Of course, there were a lot of global headwinds there they, as well. They still kept the faith in India. And and thereafter, you saw that, you know, ever since this announcement came in September, the Shom Committee and all of that, you've seen another huge trajectory. Until then, I think it was hovering around 10, 12. We'll close this year with $23 billion in net inflows. On the other hand, equity markets on the mutual fund side have not, equity flows on the mutual fund side have not been great. Isn't that uh, very disappointing? You've seen India's capital markets evolve uh, for a better part since the time they actually started evolving, we're still pretty much where we were. We're still unable to enhance the participation of the retail investor, of domestic money into equities. So I have, you know, kind of a fundamental belief there, which is somewhat contrary to the way the policymakers are looking at it. I feel given the relatively high interest rate scenario in India, People are today able to get 8 9% and sometimes in debt mutual funds, given the interest rate cycle you come in, you could even get double digit returns on a debt basis. People are less likely to go into a volatile equity market. Unless Indians now get this habit of saying that over a much longer period of time, decade, two decades, if you continuously and systematically invest in the equity markets through a mutual fund or through the life insurance policy, you will get superior returns unless that belief is there. Because otherwise people have seen that debt returns have been pretty phenomenal. 
So I know the more experts view it to say, but the debt returns have not really beaten inflation. But that's not the way people look at it. They still say I'm getting nine, ten percent returns, whereas in the last four, five years they've seen very choppy equity markets, where depending on when you've entered and when you're exiting, you could have seen low single-digit returns, if not negative returns in some periods. Mm-hmm.